Watching the uh, headlines in the news, you would think that the sky is going to fall down, especially now that people claim that all the Intel and AMD and ARM processors are having a serious security uh, leak uh, because of the meltdown and the Spectre uh, discoveries, basically. Uh, but what people have forgotten is that these shortcomings or these security holes, as they call them now, have been part of the overall design from the beginning. Uh, the CPUs were already developed in the 1990s and they were built in such a way that there is a race condition between fetching the data actually from memory and actually checking the privileges of that specific fetch. Because checking the privilege takes a bit longer than actually getting the data. So it would not be very smart to wait um, for all these processes to happen, uh, first to check uh, the uh, privileges and then actually get the data out of memory. Uh, that would slow down those uh, uh, CPUs. Furthermore, uh, CPUs are developed with multiple uh, processors nowadays, so instructions are executed in an out-of-order uh, sequence, basically, as long as the result at the end is uh, accurate and correct. So saying that this is something brand new uh, is a bit over the top i think it is not brand new it's well known since a long time and meltdown actually relates to the fact that a unauthorized process will get access to data of authorized uh, processes get the data out of the memory get the data out of the virtual memory and that's how you could read basically information that you should not be able to get at normally so that's what Meltdown is doing. It's getting data out of the protected memory areas which do not belong to that specific process. Um, now this has not happened in life. There is no exploit so far known, and it doesn't mean it's not going to happen, but so far there is no exploit happening until today, and today it's the 12th of January, and it hasn't happened yet, uh, that anybody was able to do this over the internet or whatever. They've done it in the lab, uh, but of course a lab is a controlled environment and things are a bit easier. Now, um, a lot of people will come up with patches and everybody sees business in it, obviously. Um, but reality is that you really can't fix it in essence without losing performance on your CPU, unless you would change the hardware of the CPU, because you have to play into the um, privilege checking has to happen a bit faster. Um, or you have to wait to fetch the data from memory and that's why in many cases uh, the patches that have been provided for the different systems have resulted in up to 16% slower CPU speeds, slower CPU performance. But not only that, the blue screen of that has been seen and after a reboot the machine would never come up again. So be very careful with patches for a meltdown and spectre. But having said that, I am not a security expert, but again, as I said before, um, it hasn't happened yet in life, but it may, uh, so we better be prepared. So let's have a look on how that actually works. Let us first look on how a normal computer uh, executes an instruction. Well, first of all, we have physical memory, and that's kind of limited to whatever it is that you have fitted in your machine, but it's not infinite. And we know that we have lots of processes running in the system and all these processes, they all need a piece of the physical memory. But there isn't just enough physical memory, so there is a mechanism implemented which is called memory mapping. So applications or processes will get virtual memory allocated through the memory mapping method. And the memory mapping method is actually a method uh, which allows you to endlessly assign virtual memory. And memory will be swapped out with the physical memory, so the physical memory will be shared amongst the memory mapping. Processes like the blue ones are running uh, in the virtual memory map, but they do have an allocation in the physical memory. Now, when an authorized process is making a request uh, to read data out of memory, 
basically uh, two aspects started up. First of all, there is a process or an execution of the instruction to read the memory, and the memory uh, will be addressed through uh, the memory mapping. The memory is then fetched, uh, or the data more to say, is fetched out of the memory and is being put in cache. At the same time when the memory access was started, a privilege verification was started because the authorized process should have no access to the actual data unless it's been verified and it meets the privilege that was assigned to it. So basically the blue authorized process should only be able to get data from its own allocated memory locations. So when the privilege check is OK, then the data access is granted and basically the cache is read out by the CPU because that's internal CPU cache and then the outcome of that instruction is then forwarded back to the uh, process. However, if the privilege was not okay because the authorized process, the blue process, was trying to get access to a non-authorized memory location, then there would be an exception on the CPU and the read operation would be void and basically the cache would be wiped and the authorized process would not be receiving that data return. So that is in general terms how a normal execution works. Now let's look at the meltdown uh, process. What happens? Where is, where is the weakness in this? Again, uh, we have our memory mapping with a blue process running uh, and that is consuming memory space in the physical memory. Now we have a raw pro process requesting uh, memory access. And the raw process is actually a hacker trying to get into your system. So the first thing uh, that's going to happen now is that the race is starting, the race between the memory access and the privilege verification. So the memory access is started in order to expedite the processing. And the data is now read into cache. At the same time, uh, the privilege verification started. That takes a bit longer, and at the end of that process, the ROC uh, process that requested access to the blue data is now been denied because it doesn't have the privileges. But as you can see, there's a time lapse between that the time that the data has been in the cache and the time that the access has been denied. This is what we call now the meltdown exploit moment. See, um, the CPU cache is not readable by any unauthorized process. So actually, the raw process right now cannot even read the actual data content of the CPU cache. But by using a cache timing attack, and that's a kind of a side channel attack, the raw process can now determine whether the data from a specific address is held within the CPU cache, even if it cannot itself read the actual data from that address. So if the data from some address has been cached by the CPU, then a second instruction or read instruction on the CPU will cause the CPU to read its own cache, because that's the fastest way. And if it's not in cache, then the CPU will have to read it from memory, which is a lot slower. Now the ROC process is able to detect a difference in timing and it can use that difference in timing to find out what actually took place and whether the address was already in the CPU cache or not. Now the meltdown can then further exploit the CPU instruction set to gain full access to all mapped memory and thereby actually reading all that data and now we have leaked the information. This is how Meltdown is working.